yesterday we talked about how covalent bonding is orbital overlap and these orbitals when they overlap they basically share the electron in that process and uh, now the electron is going to be in a molecular orbital and that orbital is shared between the two nucleuses or between the two atoms that you have and that is how we get molecules we also saw that these molecules come in different shapes and uh, different uh, uh, arrangements so for example uh, you can get single bond and that single bond is going to be called sigma and that sigma can have different shapes or different angles as well similarly the second or the third bond that two atoms make with each other that is pi bond and that is a pi orbital that they make and pi orbital cannot be in the same physical space as sigma wo sara kuch theek hai but does this mean that these molecular orbitals which have the two electrons being shared they are going to be equally shared that's not always the case so for example if we have fluorine and fluorine they share one pair of electrons and uh, they have these lone pairs and this is called a lui dot diagram i have two electrons that are being shared and that is what represents the bond between them now because fluorine has nine protons pulling on this and this fluorine also has nine protons pulling on this and they are identical in every way that means that they these two electrons will be equally shared there is a symmetrical distribution and in this way we can see that they both attract them equally we call this ability to pull on these electrons as electronegativity electronegativity is the ability of an atom to pull or attract shared pair of electrons towards itself now this attraction this ability to pull on them is different for every atom it has a lot to do with the size of the atom the number of protons that are in there the shielding that it is has it has for the large shell obviously these electrons are being shared in valence shell now let's say i take hydrogen and fluorine they also share one pair but this time hydrogen is pulling on it with one proton and fluorine is pulling on it with nine protons even though fluorine is a bigger atom that attraction is still a lot so what will happen is that these electrons are going to be asymmetrically distributed they are going to be more towards fluorine they are still going to share them sure it's not like a fluorine will leke chale gaya but they are going to spend more time closer to fluorine and we say that that is because fluorine is more electronegative than hydrogen in this case what happens is that because they spend more time towards fluorine fluorine gets a partial negative charge and hydrogen gets a partial positive charge and this is called bond polarity we say that this is a polar bond this one was a non polar bond there were no charges like this okay and the there are equal distribution symmetric distribution in here but in this one there is not symmetric distribution and because of that we can clearly see that this is going to have slightly positive and slightly negative charges and this is bond polarity bond polarity plays a very important role in the way things are in in the way life is because it's important for polar bonds to be there for life to exist actually so what we say is that we usually call it polar covalent bond whenever there is unequal sharing of electrons this side the one with slightly negative charge it is more electron rich and this side is less electron rich we can say that this has higher electron density and this side has lower electron density so it is slightly positive and that one is slightly negative okay and these are called polar poles that we have now here's the thing they are still in the sigma bond or the sigma orbital but they are more towards the fluorine that's the idea of what partial charges mean and that's how we know what electronegativity is now electronegativity as i said bahut si reasons hai uske increase or decrease karne ke and we don't want to get into all of that 
सो हम क्या करते हैं वी जस्ट अज्यूम द ऑर्डर ऑफ इलेक्ट्रोनेगेटिविटी सो देर इज अ पॉलिंग स्केल जो इसका होता है और पॉलिंग स्केल पे इन चीजों को हमेशा करते हैं उस उसमें हाईएस्ट वैल्यू इज फोर एंड द लोएस्ट वैल्यू इज जीरो बट जीरो किसी भी आइटम की नहीं है आई थिंक द स्मॉलेस्ट वन इज जीरो पॉइंट सेवन आई थिंक आई एम नॉट श्योर नाउ द ऑर्डर इज एफ ओ एन सी एल ये वो चार हैं जिनकी इलेक्ट्रोनिगेटिविटी बहुत ज्यादा है so they are going to show some properties that are not so often seen in other atoms or molecules of other atoms now the closer you are to fluorine which is on one corner of the periodic table the greater the electronegativity so we can see that across a period the atom gets smaller so electronegativity will increase because wo zyada pull karega similarly niche se upar atom gets smaller again to wo zyada pull karega so both of these point towards fluorine being the smallest atom after hydrogen that makes bonds helium is the smallest atom overall but because helium does not make any bonds we are not considering it and these four are the important ones okay so that's the idea polar bond non polar bond polar bond that means there is going to be different electronegativity of the atoms involved there is going to be electrons being pulled more towards one side the electron pair the bond pair slightly negative charge slightly positive charge together we will call these dipoles that's another important term dipole so this is one dipole together ek positive and negative milke ek dipole create karte hain jitna zyada iska aur iska electronegativity ka difference hoga utni zyada bond polarity hogi utna zyada uh, electrons will be lopsidedly shared so we look at the delta of electronegativity jitna zyada unki electronegativity ka difference utna zyada wo ek dusre se zyada polarity create karenge turns out the ionic bond is just a by product of this because imagine if the difference in electronegativity was so much ki wo electron ko itna zyada pull karta hai ki wo 100% of the time dusre atom ke paas rehna shuru kar de So what is that? That is an ionic bond. So ionic bond is nothing but the idea that the difference in electronegativity is so much that electron is effectively transferred. Okay, so I was saying that the difference in electronegativity of these two elements that are involved in bonding that will play a very important role in figuring out if bond polar will be or not. And if it is polar, to what extent will it be polar? Is it so polar that it will be so that electron will transfer? Or is it so polar that electron will spend more time with the other atom? जब वो बिल्कुल ही नॉन पोलर होगी कि इलेक्ट्रॉन्स आर गोइंग टू बी ऑलमोस्ट इक्वली डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड तो एक तो ये बात होगी दूसरी बात जो बॉन्ड पोलैरिटी ये बॉन्ड पोलैरिटी है इसका इलेक्ट्रोनेगेटिविटी से ताल्लुक है बट मोलेक्युलर पोलैरिटी का एक और फैक्टर भी है मोलेक्युलर पोलैरिटी का मतलब है कि ओवरऑल मोलिक्यूल पोलर है या नहीं है एंड दैट डिपेंड्स ऑन वॉट वी कॉल डायपोल मोमेंट dipole moment is a vector that describes the overall movement of electrons or overall pull of electrons okay so it's a vector that describes where the electrons are being pulled more in a molecule so let's take hcl for example hcl has a slight negative charge here slight positive charge here why because chlorine is one of those four elements that i talked about and because of this the electrons in the whole molecule are being pulled more towards chlorine and less towards hydrogen and that is how we show it the side se wo zyada attract ho rahe hain that is shown by an arrow and the side where they are being like there is less attraction usko hum ek positive sa bana dete hain let's take ammonia for example in ammonia this is the structure of ammonia i have trigonal pyramidal shape of the molecule there is a lone pair here nitrogen has the highest electron pull so uski wajah se slight negative slight positive charges create honge and all of these three bonds are polar and which means and all of these are polar and all of them are pushing their electrons towards nitrogen wo uski taraf attract ho rahe to overall dipole moment is towards nitrogen to overall dipole moment nitrogen ki taraf hone ka matlab ye hua ki ye molecule polar hoga let's take our favorite water here 
water has a bent structure. There are two lone pairs and the slight positive and slight negative charges are there because oxygen is again, one of those four. And here again, the overall dipole, dipole moment is towards oxygen because her taraf se vector oxygen ki taraf point kar hai. But that's not always the case ki sab e ki taraf point kar rahe Let's take the example of carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide has polar bonds. There's a slight positive here, slight negative here. The electronegativity of oxygen is much higher than that of carbon, but it is a linear structure. So its dipole moment is here, its dipole moment is here, and its means that it will happen that the dipole moment will cancel out because they're vectors. Vectors cancel out. But what about carbon monoxide? Carbon monoxide. Is me kya hai ki hamare paas there's a triple bond and we'll talk about how that triple bond is uh, going to be formed. मतलब कहाँ से आए वो इलेक्ट्रॉन जिनसे वो बन रही है. But is carbon monoxide polar? What do you think? It is polar. Because there's slight negative here, slight positive here. So overall dipole moment is towards oxygen. So as long as the vector adds up and they all point towards the same thing, it's going to be polar. But as long as they are pointing in opposite directions and they cancel each other out because they're vectors, that shows that they are non-polar. Okay. <clears throat> so polarity of the bond depends on electronegativity, but the polarity of the molecule depends on the overall dipole moment. And in the exam, they usually ask us, iski dipole moment ki ko ki aur kis se bhi karega. So let me give you an example. Let's say I have this molecule here. And let's compare it with this molecule here. We will clearly see that this has a dipole moment towards this side. This has a dipole moment towards this side. Polarities cancel out totally. Or yahan pe bhi dipole moments is taraf ko ja rahi hai. Okay. So the idea of dipole moment is important whenever we want to figure out whether something is polar or not. Okay. So in any such molecule, first draw the shape. You need to be able to know what the shape is, what the angles are. And then you can figure out the bond polarity through knowing the electronegativity of different things. So I, I will send you a list of these questions uh, in which you have to figure out if this molecule is polar, if this molecule is non-polar, and we will go through that and you will obviously understand this. So Yogi bond polarity. This is the second main topic that we want you to discuss today. That is that is it important that in a covalent bond, both electrons should come from the same atom? How important is that? Turns out it's not important at all. Why? Because a bond is made by overlap of orbitals and there has to be two electrons for that to happen. That's all that matters. It does not matter where the two electrons are coming from because the electrons of one atom are not different from the electrons of the other atom. Electron to electron, hai na? Just the atom se hai. So that is why it does not matter where the electrons come from. As long as there are two electrons, there's a pair in an orbital and those orbitals overlap to make molecular orbital. So you can have molecular orbital where both atoms provide electrons or you can have molecular orbitals in which one atom provides an electron. What this means is that you don't have electron nahi hona So you can have situations where one orbital is like this and the other orbital is like this. They will both overlap and they'll give us a new orbital overlap ke through which is like this. You can have orbitals where one is completely filled and the other is completely empty. And when they overlap, you can clearly see that they're making identical molecular orbital. Obviously, we don't show them. 
उसको हम सिग्मा बोलते हैं एंड दैट इज हाउ इट कम्स आउट वी और वो पाई भी हो सकता है and we will talk about different examples of this the goal is to make sure that we have an molecular orbital with two electron that's all isse koi fark nahi padta ki wo kahan se aaya sure the way this bond is made i'm sorry if it looks like a smiley is different from how this bond is made but once it is made they are both twin brothers okay they are exactly the same they behave exactly the same the covalent bond is the same this one is called dative or coordinate bond dative bond differs in how it's made but is identical in every other way uski bond energy bond length uska uh, molecular orbital ki polarity all of that is identical to the other covalent bond usse fark nahi padta ki uski history kya thi okay so that's the important idea here and these data bonds are about they are there and they determine the behaviors of so many things let me show you two molecules three molecules in which this is common let's do four molecules let's take a ammonia molecule ammonia has this structure it has a lone pair and that's how it is now hydrogen ion has an empty orbital we say it's just a proton so this hydrogen ion with its empty orbital needs two electrons we say that this needs lone pair and ammonia has a lone pair so hydrogen ion can come and overlap its orbital with nitrogen and when it does we get another bond and this bond is shown as an arrow towards hydrogen this arrow is showing that both the electrons are coming from nitrogen but once the bond is made then there are many differences going to occur first of all nitrogen when it was in this case the bond angle was 107 but in this new case when it has shared and made an ammonium ion the angle is 109.5 why the lone pair is gone no more extra repulsion so the molecule is going to have greater volume which means it will have lower density nowhere do we see it better than in water water has a bent structure so there's oxygen here there's hydrogen hydrogen there are two lone pairs there and what water can do is that because of this slightly positive charges on the hydrogen slightly negative charges on the hydrogen water if there was another water molecule then water can pull on that and in the case of ice you can have situations where this mole molecule will be attracted two other molecules and they will form what we call sorry and they will form a dative bond so for example if i had this so here is how this will turn out to be so there's going to be a dative bond between this and this and the dative bond between this and this and there is a possibility that if that lone pair was here or in the bond angles allowed there'll be a dative bond between this and this and a dative bond between this and this and what happens is that now water is no longer having just two bonds it is part of a tetrahedral scheme it's a lattice just like diamond this is a tetrahedral lattice and just like diamond 
this is going to be really hard. Just like diamond, if you can scratch it, you can scratch ice as well. Just like diamond, the angle is going to be 109.5. Just like diamond, this is going to be hard. It will not connect like city. But unlike diamond, this one has a density that is less than it's liquid. Why? Because the molecule, when it had not made the bond, the bond angle was 104.5. Strong repulsion from two lone pairs. But now that is gone. And now you have oxygen with hydrogens and then other hydrogens and those with another oxygens. And now the bond angles are going to be 109.5. Because the bond angle is greater, there's going to be greater volume. And because of greater volume, this is going to have lower density. So ice floats. Why? Because in ice, the structure has lower density. In fact, water has the highest density at four degrees Celsius. Why it is four and not five or three that we don't need to know at this level. But I mean, this is the ability of these atoms to make these bonds, these dative bonds that determine this. In fact, dative bonds define a major type of reaction in chemistry, which we call acid-base reaction. In any acid-base reaction, lone pairs are shared. As we saw in the case of ammonium, hydrogen ion was accepting lone pair. We call those things acids. And nitrogen was donating lone pair. We call those things bases. In this case, water, this molecule is acting as an acid and this water molecule is acting as a base. And this we call auto ionization. That water can form ions and those ions can be acidic or basic. Of course, in the case of ice, that's not what we usually call. We usually deal with it in, when it is liquid. What is auto ionization? Auto ionization of water is when water reacts with other water molecules. One of them acts as an acid, one of them acts as a base, and they form ions. In the case of ice, they're not forming ions because the structure is rigid and they are forming a lattice. But in the case of water liquid, when that happens, same thing happens. One water molecule donates electron pairs, the other accepts electron pair. They, in the case of liquid or gas, they will break down. And in that case, they will form ions. In the case of solid, they will form lattice. So the reactions are same. The results are slightly different. Okay. And is there any other example of auto-ionization or is water the only one we have to know? In some cases, ethanol does it, but we don't talk about it. Like, I can't think of any reaction in our syllabus where that is used. Now, all of this plays a very important role. So in molecular geometry, in the structure and behavior of stuff, and it is these ability to make these bonds, these dative bonds that give things different structures and same things behaving differently at different temperatures. An example of that is aluminum trichloride. First of all, aluminum trichloride is a very peculiar substance because it has aluminum, which is a metal, which has a very high uh, number of electrons given to the lattice, three electrons per atom. And those form C of electrons and they have a very good conductivity. But at the same time, when it reacts with chlorine, it forms a dative bond. Or sorry, it forms a covalent bond. And you're going to get something like this. Now, there's no lone pair here. So the bond structure is going to be 120 degrees. And this is a polar bond. Now, it is possible that aluminum which has an empty orbital can overlap with another chlorine, which has lone pairs. So all of these chlorines have three lone pairs and aluminum is in need of those lone pairs to make an octet. Now, 
और वो ही है इसके पास इट इट डजेंट है एनी फोर्थ इलेक्ट्रॉन सो वट हैपन्स इज दिस एल्यूमिनियम कैन फॉर्म अ डेटे बॉन्ड विद दिस क्लोरिन and this chlorine can make a data bond with this aluminum again bond angles will shift in this case the density is going to be higher why because the bond angle initially was 120 and now the bond angle is 109.5 again tetrahedral shape and that is why this one is a higher density substance than the one that we saw earlier and this form is called the initial one was when alcl3 was just there and now it has formed al2cl6 which we call dimer the two molecules have joined together and you can have all sorts of different reactions there like you can react this with the uh, nitrogen trifluoride which is another one that shows this same property so this is the ability of these things to make dative bond that shows up in uh, different structures changes their geometry changes everything else about them the way they are arranged the way their geometry is the way their structure is the way they behave the the physical properties like density or whether it's hard or soft and all of that everything changes because of dative bond because it is like forming another covalent bond okay so two things that we talked about today dative bond and uh, bond polarity okay